Hello and welcome to your practice. My name is Alicia and today I'm going to be guiding you through yoga for gardeners. So it's been May long weekend here in Alberta and I know a lot of you have been out in your gardens and I've been hearing complaints of low back issues and honestly I garden a lot. I feel it myself so we're going to work through some of that today. I'll get you to come into a standing position. You could be at the top of your mat or the middle like me. Take one hand over your heart and one hand onto your belly. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose, filling up the belly so you can feel your hand rise. And sigh the breath out through the mouth. One more just like that. Deep breath in through the nose. Exhale, sigh it out. And this time in through the nose and out through the nose. Good, really feeling the earth under all the four corners of your feet. Maybe lift the toes and spread them, rooting down. Release the hands. Inhale, reach your arms up high. Exhale, soft bend in the knees and a really slow bowing forward, coming into a position where your chest and your belly are resting on your thighs. Bring the hands into opposite elbow crease and let the head be really heavy here. Let the arms be heavy, supporting your back through the resting on your thighs position. So for some of you, that might mean that you need a really deep bend in the knees and that's perfectly okay. We want the back to feel supported and we want gravity be to be working for us. So lengthening through the top of the head, letting everything be heavy, letting the spine elongate through the work of the gravity. Releasing in the low back. You might start to pull in a little bit of a sway side to side. There might be almost like a little bit of a bobbing action, like you can almost bounce a little bit if that feels good in your spine. Good, slowly starting to bring yourself up. Keep that bend in the knee as we come all the way up to standing position again. And stepping the feet apart, about a leg's length apart. Deep breath in, reach the arms up high. Exhale, hinge your hips, reach forward, forward, and then all the way down. Bringing the hands back into that opposite elbow crease. And you might find like the littlest bit of sway side to side here. Again, making everything really heavy, the head heavy, the arms heavy. If this is too much on your hamstrings, you can again bend the knees here. Just supporting the body. Release the hands to the floor and walk your hands towards the right foot, pivoting both of your feet to the top right side of your mat. Wiggle the right foot over. So we're in this lizard lunge with the back knee lifted, planting down the palms, lifting up the heart. Good. Can lower the back knee down here. Flex up the right toes and open up the right knee. Keep digging the palms into the floor, lifting up the heart, leveling your pelvis closer to the earth. And deep breaths there. If some of you need a little bit more engagement here, you could walk the hands forward. And keeping that beautiful breath flowing into the belly so you can feel it moving. Walking your hands back in, pick your left knee up off of the floor and we're just going to walk all the way around, pivoting both of your feet towards the left side of the mat and heel toe the left foot over to the left, giving you lots of room for your shoulder. Keep the right knee lifted for just a beat here as we lift the heart, look forward, really lengthening through the right leg. Then lower the right knee down. Flex the left toes up and open the left knee. 
and taking any, any little um, adjustments here that you wouldn't need, like maybe you want more engagement, you'll come down a little bit, maybe onto the elbows, or maybe it's just walking the hands forward a little bit. Just taking what you need from the posture. Walking up onto the hands. And we'll just step the left knee back beside the right. Hands, shoulders under the wrist and hips under the knees. A couple rounds of cat cow. Inhale, sink down the belly, lift the gaze and the tailbone. And exhale, press away the floor around the spine. And one more like that. Inhale, belly down. Exhale, spine rounds. And then coming all the way onto a seat. And extend the right leg long. Pull the left foot to the inner right thigh. Flex up the right toes and turn your torso over the right leg. Reach high the hands. Deep breath in here. Exhale, folding over the right leg into Janu Shirshasana. Good. So the goal, of course, is not to reach the foot. It's really just to maybe feel a stretch in the hamstrings. And for some of you, you might feel it in your lower left quadrant at the back. And it's not really anything to be alarmed about. It's something that it is interesting to notice. That's all. So softening into the posture with every breath, letting it take you perhaps a little bit deeper into the pose. Good, inhale, rising back up. Step the left leg over top of the right. Good, plant the left fingers down by the left hip. Inhale, reach up the right hand. As you exhale, big twist towards the left and you can use that right elbow against the left thigh just to grow a little bit taller and twisting yourself a little bit deeper. Every time you breathe in, see if you can grow taller in the spine. And every time you breathe out, you might take your gaze a little bit more over the left shoulder. Good. Inhale back through the center. Just take a little twist over to the right. Just a little counter pose. And then extend the left leg long. Pull the right foot to the inner left thigh. Torso turns over top of the left leg and reach the arms up as you breathe in. Exhale, breathe out, fold. Good, and you might take a moment as you're here just to compare the feeling between the right and the left side. If you notice a little bit more tightness in the legs on one side or a little bit more tightness in the low back on one side, it's just something to become aware of. And it's also important to be aware that most of us have some imbalances in our bodies. Good. Let the in-breath bring you up to a tall seat and step the right foot over top of the left leg. Bring the right hand down by the right hip. Inhale, left arm lifts. As you exhale, twist to the right and you might use your left elbow to just block you in a little bit deeper, growing tall as you breathe in. And maybe moving deeper in as you breathe out. Inhale back through center, nice and tall. Exhale, just a little twist to the left. Good, and coming back through the center. Coming onto your back now. So just coming down and bringing the, bringing the ankles, the heels, just close enough that you can maybe graze them with your fingers. 
and start to round the small of your back towards the earth while lifting up the pelvis gently. So you might just notice that when you do that, and it's kind of like you're pulling the rib bones in towards your hip bones. There might be a little bit of a relief in the low back um, tension just as you do that, just in that lengthening. So let's inhale, lift, lifting the belly, dropping the hip bones towards the floor like we're widening the space between the, hip, the rib bones and the hip bones. So you're arcing the low back. And then slowly exhale, rounding the small of the back into the ground again. You might lift the pelvis just slightly off of the earth. Good, and then releasing it, coming back into that little arc in the low back, pressing the pelvis into the ground, lifting up the belly. And one more time, exhale, rounding the small of the back into the earth. And inhale, opening, reaching the belly up, dropping the pelvis lower. Good, and release it back into a neutral spine. Pressing into the soles of the feet, start to round the pelvis up, like we're pulling the rib bones in towards the hip bones, and then we're lifting really slow, vertebrae by vertebrae, all the way up, maybe pressing into the feet so we can roll into the shoulders. And then really slowly as you exhale down, vertebrae by vertebrae, pressing the small of the back down into the floor. And then lifting the belly, pressing the hips down. So you have that little arc in the low back. And then exhale, press that arc down. Lifting slowly the hips, pressing into the feet, coming into a little bridge pose. Exhale, rolling down the spine very slowly. Once again, making that little arc more prominent in the low back, lifting the belly, and we'll do it one more time. Exhale, pressing the small of the back down, rolling up little by little into bridge, and little by little releasing it back down nice and slow. Good. Now very slowly lowering the knees over to the right side. Take the right foot and trap down the left knee. So you're just gonna lift it and allow the weight of the right leg to weigh down the left knee, just to give you that little stretch, maybe into your IT. Might feel it a little bit in the hip flexors. releasing this foot down and pick up the knees, drop them down onto the left side. Use the left ankle over the right knee to trap it down. Nice big breaths into the belly. Relaxing, releasing anything that's ready to go. We'll release this side, knees back through center, and then extend the legs down into your Shavasana. Take another deep breath in through the nose, filling the belly all the way up. Exhale everything out of the mouth. And just allow yourself a moment of rest here. I hope that this practice supported you in any pain or discomfort you might be feeling through the beginning of our gardening season. I know every year I go through a little bit of sciatica myself. I have a really big garden now, so it's a lot of work. <laughs> and it's worth it. It's worth every little ache. But the yoga certainly does help, so I hope that you might return to this practice when you need it and that it supports you in your gardening. Namaste.